Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we'll be going over everything you need to know about signals in Godot. So the first thing you might be asking yourself is, what is a signal exactly? And essentially, signals are just messages that are able to be sent, and then any objects or nodes that would like to subscribe to those messages can receive the messages and then react accordingly inside of their own local scripts. This basic workflow is essential to keeping your code modular and organized, and is very powerful inside of Godot. So now that we kind of know what a signal is, let's look at the key benefits of using a signal. So imagine we have our game here, and we want the character to basically increase the score whenever we pick up this lightning item. Now, since this item might also do something in our game, different parts of our game might need to react to this item pickup as well. So on top of the score updating, maybe we also need to play a power-up animation on the player. Maybe since it's a lightning bolt, we would shrink some enemies down globally. But essentially, all of these effects have to happen due to the lightning bolt activating. So this is where signals come in. Think of a signal as kind of a shout out in the game world. When this event happens, we'll emit a signal and any receiving nodes that are interested in the event can respond to it by executing their own local code. So now we're gonna actually look into connecting the signal and setting this behavior up. So in Godot, there are a couple ways to connect signals and the most basic way I'm gonna show you right now is by going to the signal tab of the object. So in my player scene, I basically have this area 2D node, and this is going to act as a pickup area, which will basically trigger the lightning bolt to execute code. And the way we do that is by selecting our area 2D, going over to the node tab on the right side, and making sure we're on the signals tab. And this is essentially going to list all of the signals which are built into the area 2D. Now in this case, we are looking for the area entered signal. So I'm gonna click on this, and you can either double click or click on the connect button down here. But once we click on that, we will get a pop-up dialog, and we just need to select the script which we'd like to connect this signal to. So I'm gonna select my player script, and once we hit connect, it will open up in our script editor here. Now, as you can see at the bottom of our script, we have this new on pickup area 2D area entered. And that's essentially saying that this method is going to be called when something enters our pickup area 2D. Now inside of this function, we would obviously put in whatever code we would like. And in this case, we'd want to make some code that can increase our score value on this label here. But that would require us to basically get a reference to the label and directly call a method on this label to update the score. Let's do this a more modular way and instead create our own signal. So back inside of our player script, we're going to go up to the top of our script where our variables are defined. And I'm going to make a new signal by defining the signal keyword, followed by the name of our signal, which in this case is lightning bolt picked up. We can now go back down to our area 2D function, and all we need to do to emit the signal is simply call the name of the signal, which is lightning bolt picked up dot emit. Now that we are emitting the signal, we can go into our label script and connect this signal to a custom function. So back in my game, I'll attach a script to my label, place it in the scripts folder, and inside of here I'll first get a reference to the player by making an export variable called player reference, set it to type character body 2D, and by saving this we can now select the label's exported property to the player. Now to connect the lightning pickup signal to a custom function inside of this label, we need to define the ready function since we want this to be connected when the game starts. And inside of here, we'll get the player reference, which is actually holding the signal dot, the name of our signal, which is lightning bolts picked up dot connect. And now we need to provide the name of the method to connect it to. So since we don't have the method defined yet, let's do that quick. Go down here, create function underscore on lightning picked up. We'll just pass for now. And then we'll copy the name of this function that we are connecting to and paste it inside of the first argument of our connect function. Now inside of this function, which will be called when the lightning bolt is picked up, I'll just put in some code to update the label text. 
And now if we test the game, everything should be working as intended. You can see if we enter the area of our lightning bolt, our score will be signaled to update. Now let's say we wanted to change the amount that our score increased for different items. Since the label is currently only increasing our score by one, we're going to be using an argument with our signal to define how much we want to increase our score by. So back in our player script, we only have one type of item currently, which is the lightning bolt. But eventually, maybe you'd want to branch out and create a function to adapt to different items and then simply emit a pickup signal with the item's score increase property. But for now, let's just emit the signal with a static number. So to define a new argument, which is data to pass through our signal, we're gonna go up to where we declared the signal at the top and simply add the parentheses to the end of your signal and also the name of the function, which is going to be called score underscore amount. Now back in our emit function, we're also going to pass in the amount we want to change our score by through here. So let's say maybe 15, and then we'll save this and go back into our label script. And we'll also need the same argument in the function that is going to be receiving the signal. So on lightning picked up, we're also going to define a score amount, and this will correlate to the data that we just passed from the player. So instead of changing our score by one, let's change our score by score amount. If we test this, you can see that when we enter the lightning bolt area, our score will now increase by 10, and that is defined locally inside of the player so in the future that could make handling your score easier to manipulate depending on if the player is holding any power-ups that change the score differently or depending on what items the player is actually picking up now the last thing I'd like to cover is kind of the workflow here. So you might be asking yourself, if we're only changing the score value when you're picking up the lightning item, why on earth wouldn't you just directly call the label change score function directly from our player? And that is a valid point, but that would create a static dependency inside of our project, which typically in games, you don't want things to be super reliant on each other. And in Godot especially, you should be prioritizing keeping your code clean and modular. So the way we've set it up like this is so that in case we have other effects that should happen from the lightning pickup, they can subscribe to the signal, execute their own local code, and we won't have to change anything inside of the player script since all of this data is just contained inside of the same signal. And also if we remove different components, like if at some point we wanted to remove this label, we could simply remove it and nothing would break in our game since we're simply just removing the receiver of the signal. So the player would end up emitting the signal and all the other components would happen without the player having to worry about directly manipulating other nodes. Now, one more example I'd like to give is the event bus. And this is a common design pattern that most Godot developers use. And essentially what it is, is an auto load script. So if we go into our scripts folder, I have an auto loads folder and I'm just gonna right click in here, create a new script. We're gonna call it event underscore bus. And I'm going to go into my project settings, go to the auto load tab and just load in this script as a singleton, add it as event bus, make sure it's enabled. We can close out of this. And the idea of this script is that we can define any signals that we'd want inside of here. And since this is a global script, any nodes from any place inside of our game can connect to and emit these signals at any time. So in this case, maybe your player score is handled inside of a global script and you wanted a setter function to emit that the score has changed whenever you know the variable changes then you would simply put a signal inside of here called player score changed. The arguments could be the old value as an int and the new value also an int. And now anything that would rely on this event of the player score changing could easily connect to this. Like let's say the label wanted to connect to this with event bus which is the global script dot player score changed dot connect. And we would connect it to the method. 
the same way that we connected the lightning bolt picked up signal earlier. This obviously wouldn't work because we have the wrong amount of arguments, but I'm sure you understand the points I'm trying to make here. Now, the one thing I would note about the event bus is to reserve all of the signals which you store in here for globally dependent signals, meaning that basic things like this area 2D signaling that something has entered its area to the player wouldn't need to be contained globally since the only thing that really cares about that would be the player. So just make sure to organize your signals properly and also try to reduce the amount of signal calls that you are actually emitting every frame because that will use up a lot of memory in your game. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you learned anything new or have any advice about this topic, be sure to leave a comment. And you can also check out the description of the video for links to helpful resources. And if you want to continue in your Godot journey, you can click on the card, which should be in the top right, and watch a full playlist of all my Godot tutorials. Anyways, thanks for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.